Eh, qué rollo, quiero mandar un saludo a mi amigo Goodfella, de parte de tu amigo Jaime Munguía. Un abrazo, que no Ánimo. Greenwood Stock Trading wants to show you how to make money in the stock market. Be a successful investor and make money from anywhere in the world you choose to be. Travel more. Spend more time with friends and family. Or simply, just enjoy the freedom to have fun. What are you waiting on? Join us today on your successful options trading journey. All right, man, my bad. Um... Let's talk about uh, WBO. WBO said that uh, Terrence Crawford doesn't have a mandatory for 18 months. Also, uh, Virgil Ortiz um, is going to have to wait, but his father talked about the split with Robert Garcia. And if my memory serves me correctly, I think I heard it was early. I was just I woke up while I went back to sleep. He said that uh, he's the, he's always been the head trainer. He's the head trainer. He's been the head trainer. Um You know, so so he kind of opened up about their situation and about how they gonna do stuff on time. And also, Virgil talked about how he the money man. So you gonna get to all of this, man. I talk about what his father said first, real quick. He basically said that, uh, you know, they gonna make sure they make the right moves with Virgil Ortiz. He said they gonna make sure they make the right moves with him. Said that you know if they mess up, you know he pay his bills, he pay his family's bills. So. They're going to make the right moves. He talking about how they wasn't going to overlook McKesson, but obviously the million-dollar question was about splitting with Robert Garcia and people jumping the gun saying he was going to Eddie Renasso. He said they never was going with Eddie Renasso. They just was going to a few gyms, and you know people jumped the gun about the gyms. He said they never signed with Eddie Renasso. He said that they were just going to his gym and, and that, you know, he talked about how he, you know, I just one thing I respect about him because I seen you kind of lost a little bit of respect for Badu Jack. I still like Badu Jack, but I seen Badu Jack um break up with Eddie Eddie Mustafa Muhammad through a text message. Um uh, Virgil uh Ortiz Sr. said that he sat down and he told Robert Garcia face to face that it wasn't gonna work. He says that uh, you know, he's not gonna reveal what he said to Robert Garcia, what the reasons were. But the reason was not that he missed that, that fight where he went with another fighter. So I think at the last fight he kept, he had that he went with another fight. He said that's not the problem. He said that he's always in his uh, you know, he's you know he said he'd been you know his son's head trainer since um since the amateurs. So that wasn't the issue. He know exactly he knows exactly what to do um in the corner. So yeah, he opened up a fight hype. He killed all the rumors and he don't owe. Nobody, no explanation about why he left Robert Garcia, right? And it could have been time. It could have been anything, right? So right now, it's been said. He didn't really open up on this part. It's been said they work with Manny Robles, and he's going to be the head coach. And it sounds like in my mind, you can go listen to the interview. It sounds like he said that he's always been the head coach. That's what I believe he said. Don't quote me on that. Still trying to wake up. Nah, he said that he always been the head coach. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I've always been the head coach. That's what I think I heard. <laughs> so he basically said that, you know, he always, you know, he used to doing it, being in his son's corner. Now, I don't know what his qualifications are, but he got his son very far. Um, he got his son very far, um, you know, uh, he got his son very far, you know, through the amateurs, he got him some, and then also he's important to Golden Boy too. So he's very important to Golden Boy, and um, so you got to remember that too. Like he worked him and Ryan, Gar they're gonna take their time with him and Ryan, uh, Ryan Garcia because they they two aces. They lost James to Beast Wilson, the older heavyweight, love his videos with his son. Um, You know, he talked about Spencer Carver, but that shit, you know. So this is the interview he did with uh with Fight Hype. No, I listen to right here. So I, I like his dad, straight shooter. Um and one of the things I liked about him is that he sat down and he talked, he told Robert to his face. Why Robert won't be coaching him no more. 
And, and that's what I respect because a lot of these dudes, man, like I said, I, that's why I lost a little respect for, for, uh, I lost a little bit of respect for, uh, for uh, Badu Jack when he my Eddie Masaba said he broke him up, they broke up. He fired him through a text message to me. That's trash. That's trash. But he basically said that uh, you know, he said he killed all the rumors. They never was going to Abraham. So he said it wasn't that Robert missed the fight and chose to go through another. He chose to go through uh the train another fighter that night. He said none of that was the issue. He's really gonna keep that between him and Robert Garcia. So it could have just been gym time, bro. You know, you get all them, you get all them damn coaches, bro. We get them coaches with a whole bunch of fighters, man. It's, it, it really boils down to gym time, and that's what people got to remember. You know, you Freddie Rose had five, ten thousand fighters. You don't have an opportunity just to, you know, get them a lot of people that personal time. You probably training one fighter on one side of the gym, you got assistant work with another fighter. Some of them, some of these dudes, most of these dudes, they paying you top dollar. They want that. They want that intimate time. They want that one-on-one -on -one time. You know what I'm saying? That one or two-hour block session, or whatever. So it is what it is, bro. So and obviously the aces in the in the bullpen who make who bring it in the most money, going they gonna get that. So they gonna you know they gonna get that. So yeah, he basically said that uh, that's one of the reasons why you know, he just you know cleared the air. Never was Eddie, never went Eddie Renoso. Now it was being said that with. Uh, there with uh, what's the kid's name? It with Manny Robles, but he's the head trainer. He said, I believe he said he always been the head trainer. I guess Robert Garcia was just helping him, you know. So then Virgil went on to say that uh, he went on to say that uh, a lot of fighters asking me to asking to fight me, they want the, that payday and exposure of both. I'm just thinking like, bro, you ain't like uh. You know what I'm saying? You ain't like that fighter, though. You know what I'm saying? You don't bring the biggest payday out there. And I don't really hear a lot of people calling them out, either. You know, but he says there's a lot of... He said there's a lot of fighters asking me to... Asking to fight me. They want the payday, that exposure, or they want both. Or Ortiz told boxing, if I was in their shoes, I wanted as well to be that guy. It's kind of cool. But a lot of people don't think he that guy yet, bro, or close to being that guy. As you got to understand, bro, like, bro, you know, he fighting on the network where it ain't getting that much publicity. You know, he had like he Errol Spence. You're not Errol Spence. You know, everybody, ain't, you don't have nothing nobody want, bro. When you get a title, then, you know, that might that might tend to change. But right now, you ain't got no title. You know, you don't have no title, bro. So he going around, think he big shit, but don't nobody even... Don't nobody even, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody even uh, really, really, your name don't really ring bells. Maybe on the West Coast it do, in Southwest, but, you know, you fight on the zone, it's hurting your, your, it's hurting your, hurting your publicity, bro. That's my thing. He act like he big shit. And even some of the title holders in this division ain't even big shit. You know? So that's hilarious to me, but hey, I mean, I been he's a hell of a fighter, bro. I like him. Cool. Interviewed him too. Interviewed a whole bunch of people last week. He said, Qual hope so. That's the that's always the goal. I want to fight as many times as possible. Insist Ortiz. I don't want to waste uh, any time not fighting. You don't get that time back. So it says January day was originally teased for Ortiz first fight in 2022. Those plans are shifted uh to line up with Golden Boy Pronunciation, nailing down the final details for the event. Which takes place at the USC's Gallon Center in Los Angeles, even a two month delay to still leave Ortiz room to at least uh at least some of the of the names on a uh at least face some uh names on a growing list of contenders and champions who claim to want to get in the ring. So I mean he I mean at the end of the day he feeling himself, but you you know I, and, and honestly you after all I think boots you know boots got a little bit more buzz from fighting on a, a network with a little bit more exposure. So just a little bit more exposure, but I feel him. He's a hell of a fighter. You know, everything he does is a knockout. You know, that's one thing that you know him getting on the knockouts that he's going versus quality opponents. I thought he should be a bigger name, but that's the part that's the problem with being part of an upstart company. And they still trying to figure out shit. He stopped every opponent that he faced, bro. 
Kavlaskis, Hooker, Vargas, Brad Solomon, Sonia Zorko, whatever his name is, no disrespect. Mauricio Herrera, I mean, he said Roberto Ortiz is a good puncher. Juan Carlos and Gatto, he, well, he got some solid name. His resume is solid, solid, real solid. You know, obviously you want to see some of those names pop off that, you know, names pop off that list to get him a title shot. Right now, our region, how to fish Greece, Keith Thurman to get a title shot, which you know it's not going to happen. Um, probably somebody along those lines, bro, to get that title shot. But, you know, it is what it is. Maybe Cody Crowley would be a good opponent, Sandor Martin. But solid resume. He is knocking at the door. Um, he is knocking at the door to be a champion. Like I said, he stopped every, everybody. So that's impressive. Everybody talk about uh, Gary Tom Russell's streak and, um, you know, Edwin, Edwin Berlanga's streak. But this dude got a hell of a streak going on himself. So. Yeah, I like Ortiz. Defense can get better, but hey, when you offense, that is your defense. That's what Freddie used to teach out there. Now here we go right here. So um I guess he responds to my Terrence Crawford mandatory was against Showtime. Uh Sean Porter last November. Crawford has up to 18 months since Porter to face the next mandatory challenger. So, so yep, he got 14 months. So that would be uh December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August, September, October, November, December, uh, January, what, February, March, April, May. So I think the next May, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. So you got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So yeah, next, the next 2023 May. So he WBO super champion. So I guess that give him more than give that an extra six months to defend. So Crawford don't have to see Virgil Ortiz. Um, for quite some time, bro. You don't have to see Virgil Ortiz um, or any other mandatory challenger until May 2023. So Crawford got an open window. Yep, he got an open window to get in there and um, make some stuff happen. Unify. He can. I think he's the WL Super Champion up there. He is, so he can move up and and, and challenge for the WBO with Tim Zhu. You know whatever happened with the Tim Zhu Castanos. Charles situation, they should be making their WBO should making the ruling pretty soon. I think by the end of this week. So it's gonna be very interesting to see exactly how all that play out. It's gonna be very, very interesting. So um yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be hella, hella, hella funny, bro, to see how that exactly play out as far as that man getting that uh getting his title shot and Ortiz not looking to defy Crawford anyway next from what I heard, and he shouldn't. You know, we should go out there and try to get some of them, try to get some of them fights that uh he should try to get some of them damn fights that uh that we talked about. Alvarez and Keith Thurman, you know, that's just gonna help us develop man. But yeah, ain't no rush, bro. Wait to see what happened with Crawford and Spence and then get your belt. So yeah, obviously we'd love to fight knock off Terrence Crawford or knock off Spence and Gugas or whoever the hell it may be. But hey, sometimes you got to be patient. Sometimes you might rush to something that you're not ready. So Crawford pretty much can do whatever you want to do. And with Canelo going over to UAE, with Curtis Shields going over to the UK, you know, Savannah Marshall got kicked, fight got kicked, got pushed back. So he probably going back over there. Reed is going back over there. I mean, it, it, don't, it wouldn't surprise me, bro. It would not surprise me if Crawford went overseas and uh, Ben Salam said, you know, a boxer who helped. Promote the event this uh, this weekend. He said he would love to work with Terrence Crawford. So, if no Spence, and obviously it sounds like it'd be no Charlo. Charlo Her might, you know, unify the division to move up. If that's not an option, then I think that uh, Crawford might need to rebuild, rebrand himself in the UK and just get as much money as he wants to. And it's messed up that he did everything that PBC asked him to do. He cut ties with Bob and the, the lawsuit. The lawsuit might be, you know, his cushion just in case he doesn't, he retired, don't get that money on the back end. But um, Ben Salah said he would love to work with Terrence Crawford. He promotes boxer who put on the Kell Brook and Con event. Says so Salah very interested in working with Terrence Crawford. You know, says WBO champion Terrence Crawford will be welcomed with open arms by Sky Sports and boxer uh, promoter uh, Ben Salah, a boxer. Crawford recently traveled over to the UK to sit ringside for the British grudge match. Between the American and Kell at Manchester in the world title fights, Crawford has beaten UK fighters like Ricky Burns and 
Brooklyn Khan, 34-year-old Crawford, is currently a promotional free agent after his contract expired a long time from the top rank. During his recent trip, uh, the Omaha native enjoyed his time in the UK. He said, quote, I can't say enough. Best uh, best friends on earth in the UK. I'll be looking forward to uh, coming back to the UK soon, and maybe one day we can get a fight down there. So, you know, he said, Ben Salam says, I like to uh I like Terrence Crawford to come and fight Eubanks in the UK. Obviously, he'd have to move up and wait, but I think that's a massive fight. Salam told um the son. He said, quote, obviously used uh to earning a lot of money, so we need to find the uh, right fight. It needs to be on pay-per-view. He wants to be a part of it, and he's seen the Scott platform as well. We love to make it happen, but it's about finding the right fight for him. That's the key, whether it's Josh Taylor down the line. Well, there's Eubanks and he comes up. He's got options. Quote, look, Terrence will fight anyone, anyone, whether he has to come up away. I don't know how open he is to that. Obviously, he wants to fight Spence but next, but Spence is fighting later in the year. Terrence is waiting for a big opportunity. He'll take anything if the money is right, if it will involve Chris coming down a bit. But I definitely think uh, Terrence is open to fight anyone in the U.K., including Eubanks Jr. So, I mean, Eubanks got to go snatch a belt. That'll make it even bigger. UK, Eubanks got to go snatch a belt. And kind of, you know, kind of if he can snatch a belt, which he, I mean, right now, you know, you, you know what happened with Golovkin and Murata, we'll see what happened with Charlo might be moving up and Demetrius Andre moving up. Maybe he get a shot with Janibic. So if Eubanks can get a belt, then it'd be worth the risk because Crawford just jumped to 160, fight Eubanks. I don't know if you want to do that. I think it's possible Eubanks is a big athletic guy, but there's some flaws there. And then maybe drop down, get a 54-pound belt, you know, fight Liam Smith, uh, and then retire or something like that. So that's an interesting alternative route, but uh, we'll see what happens, man. But hey, let me know what you girls and guys think. Check the welterweight boxing playlist. Check the boxing list playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel next to the subscribe button. It's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Uh, increase your chance of notifications. We go live drop the video. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313, Venmo, CJ Good 313, PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love and support of everybody uh, showing the channel. But uh, other than that, check out the boxing news and welterweight playlist. Uh, one time for the one time. Peace.